Hi, this is Ricky from Data Mastery. Welcome to our channel. In the previous videos, we have seen how to load data into Snowflake using various different ways. We loaded the data in bulk using the copy into command, and we also used streams and tasks to load the data periodically based on certain schedule. In today's video, we will see how to load the data continuously from the external stage into Snowflake tables. What we are going to do in this video is to set up the target table where we want to load the data, set up the file format, like if you have the data in the CSV format or JSON, you create that file format, create the storage integration to securely connect with your cloud platform, which is AWS in this case, and then create the external stage using S3, and then create the snow pipe, and then set up the event-based workflow. So the idea here is whenever a new file will be uploaded to S3, it will trigger Snowpipe automatically, and then Snowpipe will pull the data from S3 and load into Snowflake. So once the data gets loaded, we will verify the data, and we will also see the usage history of Snowpipe. Uh, let's start with uh, creating a target table, which is going to be the customer orders and it has four columns. I have orders database, and in the orders database, I have a public schema. The table has been created. Next thing that we need to do is to create a file format. My data is in the CSV format, so I will create a CSV format. Next, I'm going to create a storage integration. So before you create a storage integration, you need uh, to create an S3 bucket, and you also need to create an IAM role. So if I go to my AWS account, you can see that I have a data mastery Snowflake demo, which is my bucket name, and within this bucket, I have this folder called orders. And then I have this Snowflake storage role. I have granted the read-only access, the S3 read-only access to this uh, IAM role. So once you create the IAM role, you have to copy this ARN. We are going to come back and edit the trust relationship, but that will happen after we create the storage integration. So copy the ARN of your IAM role and also copy the URL of your S3 bucket and put those values here and then create the storage integration. Now I have the storage integration created. Next thing I wanna do is to describe this integration because I need a couple of values that I'm gonna use in my IAM role. So when you run this statement to describe the storage integration, uh, there are a couple of things, which is the IAM user ARN. So I have to copy this and I'm gonna go to my IAM role edit the trust policy, and in here, I'm just gonna replace this with my new user ARN. And the next thing I need is the external ID. So I'm just gonna copy this and replace the external ID with a new external ID and update the policy. It is very important to update the trust or relationship policy. Otherwise, Snowflake will not be able to assume this IAM role in order to access S3 bucket. So the way the flow works is we are granting access to this user, which is the Snowflake user, on this particular bucket, which is my data mastery storage bucket. And this is the external ID. And the same external ID is something that you can see here. After the storage integration is created, next thing that we need to do is to create an external stage. So this is my stage and it is going to connect with my S3 bucket and I'm going to use the storage integration for authentication and the file format is the CSV format which I created earlier. So create a stage. Okay, so the stage has been created and if you refresh our, uh, this uh, view and you will see that within our public schema we have tables and this is the customer orders which I created now. And then within the stages, I have the S3 stage, I have a file format. So this, is, this all looks good. 
The next thing is to create a snow pipe. So, so far we are able to integrate our Snowflake with AWS to access the S3 bucket. And the next thing that we're gonna do is to create a snow pipe so that we can load the data into our table. So you can create snow pipe using this syntax. This is the snow pipe name. And then you have to tell snow pipe that where you want to copy the data into. So copy into command is gonna be used in snow pipe as well. The same command can be used to load the data in bulk. Uh, so copy into customer orders from stage. So the stage is what is basically pointing to the S3 bucket. And this is my file format, which is CSV format on error, I'll say continue. Now that our snow pipe has been created, let's describe this pipe and see the various uh, configuration values. So it tells you the date and time the pipe has been created on, the pipe name and the database in which this pipe got created in. One thing that we need to look for is the notification channel. Right now you can see that the notification channel is set to null, which means that we have missed something in our snow pipe definition. And the notification channel is the SQS ARN, which gets created on the Snowflake side. But the reason it is missing is because of this one parameter, which is called auto ingest. We need to set it to true and then recreate the pipe. Describe the pipe again. And now you can see that we can see uh, the ARN of the SQS. Now this is what we're gonna use with our S3 events. This is the out of box functionality provided by Snowflake with Snowpipe. So SQS that gets created on the Snowflake side can be used in the S3 events. So copy this ARN and go to your S3 bucket, click on properties. And here you see the event notification. Click on create event notification Event name is Snowpipe. And the prefix is gonna be orders because our files are gonna be uh, uploaded to the orders folder within that S3 bucket. And you can optionally provide us fix here, like whether you're gonna provide .csv or something. Otherwise you can just leave it as is. And I'm going to create a put event here. So S3 put event. Or you can also enable this event, which is gonna trigger the pipe for any S3 colon object creator, which means any object create events will trigger snow pipe. So I'm gonna select this and then scroll all the way down. And for the destination, I'm going to use SQS queue. And here I'm going to provide SQS queue ARN and paste the ARN of your SQS queue that you copied from Snowflake and click on save changes. So just a quick recap, what we did, we created a snow pipe in Snowflake and we copied the notification channel value, which is basically a queue that gets created on the Snowflake side. Then we went to the S3 bucket and we created a new event notification for all the newly created objects. And the destination is the SQS, which gets created on the Snowflake side. So now we have our storage integration set up. We have our snow pipe set up and we also have the event notification set up on the S3. So whenever a new file will be uploaded, the event notification will notify the SQS and the SQS will basically trigger the snow pipe and load the data into the customer orders table. So now I'm going to run a select statement to select all the data from customer orders. And right now this is null. What I'm gonna do now is to upload a sample data into my S3 
I go to buckets, go to snowflake demo, orders, and I'm gonna upload the data in here. This is my orders.csv file with just a couple of records and click on upload. Now I'll go back to Snowflake and run the select statement again. And you can see that I have a couple of records which gets ingested into the table. So this is all done by uh, Snowpipe. Now I'm going to upload a new set of data so I can show you here. So this is uh, just a dummy data with uh, 11 records or 10 records. So I'm just gonna upload this to the S3 and we will see if Snowpipe will be able to load the data into the table. So I'm gonna go back to my S3 bucket and I'm gonna drag this CSV here and upload. Go back to the Snowflake and just wait for a few seconds. And here you go. So you have the new set of data loaded into the table. So you can see that this is totally event-driven workflow. So we didn't have to set up any scheduler like we have seen in the one of the previous videos using streams and tasks. We don't have to bulk load the data using copy into command that we, uh, we can run manually. So Snowpipe makes it fully automated, fully continuous loading of the data into Snowflake. You just have to put the event notification on your S3 bucket and uh, the SQS which gets created on the Snowflake side, it is fully managed by Snowflake. We don't have to do any additional configuration on the SQS side. So that's all I just wanted to show in this video. This is going to be the last video in the data loading series of Snowflake. So there are multiple ways to load the data as we have seen already and Snowpipe is fully automated to load the data continuously. So this is just I wanted to show to cover all the aspects or all the different ways of loading data into Snowflake. So whatever works for you based on your use case, uh, feel free to use that method. Uh, but uh, keep in mind there are multiple ways to load the data. I hope this video is going to be helpful for you and uh, you will be able to use this in you know your use cases or at your job. If you have any questions, do put your questions in the comments and we will make sure to answer all of your questions. And if you like this video, do subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that already and give us a thumbs up and hit that uh, bell notification icon so that you will be notified as soon as we will upload a new video. So thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for more informational videos like this.